Looks like you have Michael Marshall. Where are you from? I am from the 100th Meridian Museum in Cozad. Oh, okay. Good. You've done some wonderful renovations down there, different things, haven't you? They have a few years ago, not a whole lot lately. I joined only probably a year and a half ago. So then we had COVID and so I haven't done a whole lot since I got there. Yeah, good. You follow you on Facebook of different things. So it's like, yeah, there's some things going on. <laughs> Sorry about that. My computer decided to go wacky just as I was getting on naturally. It was working fine earlier. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so, um, well, we got a kind of a small group today. Okay, so um, real quick, I'm Erin Hauser. I'm the current um, Nebraska Museums Association um, board president. Um, and we're, this is our monthly Zoom chat. Um, our topic today is gonna be like a round table type of thing. I really don't, we really don't have anything as sort of set in stone. I don't have a security expert, unless either one of you, any of you guys are security experts. Um, but just kind of get an idea of how people handle security, what security is, that sort of thing. Um, and just to let you know that next month's monthly musing monthly museum musings will be on the third Friday instead of the fourth Friday because of Thanksgiving. And we do have a topic. It's gonna to be on museum stores, gift shops, um, and the Museum Store Association uh, led by Kirsten Parker from the Golden Spike Tower. So that's what it is. Sorry about the technical difficulties. I was even on early and it just decided to go haywire. It's a Friday, I suppose that's it. Um, so the topic this week, month is um, security issues. And so um, I'm just gonna kind of throw it out there. What do you guys do? I mean, do you have security systems? What do you do for security? Um, that sort of thing. And we'll just kind of bounce ideas off of each other and that sort of thing. So let's see, who wants to go first? It's like an eeny, meeny, miny, mo on my screen. So, so Tammy. I'll go first. I have a, a kind of say minimal and security things here, but probably our, our deterrent in some of those things, even the officers that have come in at late hours of you left a door or something unlocked, because they do come through and check our doors um, after hours to see that they're all locked. Uh, so that's our other background is our city officers do come through and door knock and, and pull doors to see if they are open. And they will call numbers if they're not open, if, they, if they're open to get somebody to lock them. And our, our security piece factor in here is mannequins every which way. And they have um, scared some of the officers when at dark and night. <laughs> um, I do have some small security cameras in here though, uh, of that part. We do have a fire, a fire system in here, uh, but nothing is sophisticated in that way, but we're minimal, so. So you don't have, a, you just have cameras, you don't have a like a security system, like if a door gets open that? No, okay. no, I don't have a door alarm type thing like that. Um, it will alert on the phone of the app to come to the phone there that there's motion. And I had to have them set so that they, there is motion and, and noise and you know, that way. Uh, you can see those day or night and there's night vision on them. So part of that, and there's staggered throughout uh, the area, all different doors, all the different, the two, the two doors we have, and then different areas inside here. Okay. So Michael, minimal. <laughs> <laughs> where are you from and what's your security like? I'm from the 100th Meridian Museum in Cozad. Um, I've only been there about a year and a half or so. Uh, Ours is kind of weird. There's no sensor on the front door. There's a motion sensor once you get about 10 feet in, and then the alarm system's way in the back, so you can't hear it until you get closer to the back. Uh, the other day, the front sensor apparently didn't pick me up. I got all the way to the back, and then I got to hear the alarm go off for the first time. It scared the crap out of me. I, I called the cops. I don't know if the alarm goes to the cops or not. I don't think it does. I put myself on the call list from the security system and the president of the board did the same. And I don't know how well it works. So somebody said they're gonna call the security company and make sure we're still halfway working. 
Okay. And and Karen, you're probably in a, a little different situation because you're in the middle of a big government building. So I am. And that's why I didn't speak up first, because my situation is so different from everybody else's in almost always. <laughs> right. um, so I'm part of the larger building security. You know, we do have a security team that patrols the state capitol. Um, I am in a vault. The, the, the number of keys that are for my vaults are limited, but, um, you know, the basement is locked. So it, in theory, if something happens in my vaults, I get a call. In practice, it rarely happens. I find out when I come in the next day, which I find kind of annoying, but Usually it's more like, oh, we had a little water leak and we dealt with it. And it's usually, I mean, I think if something happened with the collections, they call me. Usually it's just in my mechanical room. Um, you know, so we do have, that being said, I do have panic switches. And if I push them in theory, security is supposed to show up. I haven't tried it. I mean, they test the system. I know it works, but I've never had to use it. Um, the one time I probably should have used it, I didn't. <laughs> you know, we get people, you know, if, if the, the big problem right now is the basement doors are not completely secured because of the construction in the building for the HVAC project. And the contractor's like, I'm just gonna leave this open so I can get in and out. And I'm like, yeah, and that weird guy that followed you through the hallway, he's going down too, all the time. Um, and it's one of those things where we just remind people, keep the doors locked. Um, yeah, I don't have any cameras. I don't have any. And I, as far as I know, there are no cameras in the basement for um, building security. I think they're all up on the upper levels. So um, we have at Saunders County, our, our main building does have a security system that includes basically our exhibit area and our vaults. Um, it's, it's, really outdated. It was put in when our addition was put on, which is in 94. Um, so it's now going on 30 years. Um, and it does have fire um, sensing um, system, but we actually have our security system is one thing and our fire system is another thing. They do talk to each other, but they're two completely different systems. Um, and our, our system is so old that if an alarm does go off, if you accidentally set it off, it ties up the phone line. So I can't even call to say it's a mistake. Oh. You know, if you accidentally set it off, I have to wait until it gets done sending that information. Um, also a couple years ago, we had a problem where one of our, our heat sensors went bad. And so it was picking up dust and it would go off like every 10 seconds. And I couldn't, I had to shut that Technically, I shouldn't have, but I shut that pan that system off because the, the fire people couldn't come and do the system for like two days. And it's like I kind of need my system up and working. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so that is on our very lengthy to do list. Um, but it's only our main building. We have a, a campus museum, so we have um, eight or nine buildings. We have another building that's off site. Um, and none of those, I mean, those are just locked with padlocks or just a door lock. Um, we did have actually some vandalism um, actually just recently, but fortunately it was our mower shed. So um, no artifacts or anything like that, but we did talk to our, our police department and they are upping the rounds and that sort of thing. And what is interesting is that the sheriff's department is literally right across the street. <laughs> And so you would hope that they would keep track of, of kind of keep an eye on things, but technically we're not in their jurisdiction because we're in the city of Wahoo. So, um, so that's kind of our security type of things. Um, so do you guys have any like, plans or things or what you're, I mean, aside from Karen, who I, I think she would probably wish she had her own type of, of security thing. Um, but I, I guess backtracking a little bit with our security system, um, I'm on the call. I, I do live on the ground, so I am right next door. If the alarm goes off, I can 
I can come over um, and one of our board members is also on the grounds or on the call list, but that's about it. So, so are there future plans? I know I, we would like to get ours updated. So I'll go back to Tammy and see. Is there a, yeah, is there a uh, particular grant that you could apply for, for these types of things? Is that a um, um, update of those things or is there a something like that? that could help out, out, you know, update some of those different things. The other thing I wanted that I did say, I, I do have a doorbell and it goes off and it tells me that the doorbell went off. So it's, it's sound activated in that, that piece. So it'll tell me that that went off in my uh, system. So it's like, okay, if they move the door and it goes off, it's going to alert that next part. So I don't necessarily have a door alarm for this alarm, but it's a doorbell, that, then the alarm picks it up. <laughs> so in that way. So, but yeah, it's not, it's like, but is there a, um, a universal system? But we also have, you know, I can hear outside noises on some of my things, like when they have fire trucks or, or sirens, you could, you could, I'll catch that on a noise one at night for in particular. And it's like, what's my alarm saying at this hour of the morning? <laughs> oh, it's the ambulance or it's fire trucks going by. Uh, so you can hear the outside parts of it or you can hear um, that part, but it's not a, and it'll notify me within my alarm, my app system or whatever within two to three minutes of that, that notification, that incident. And Karen, how long did, is yours go through the security system and then comes back to you? I don't actually ever get notifications. I uh, I know that, so there's, there is a, um, there, there is actually no security, like I get no alarms if somebody has come into my vaults. Uh, I, I get nothing. There is, there's no, I don't even get, I, in theory, they're supposed to, anybody who accesses any of my vaults is supposed to send me an email. And I would say 90% of the time that doesn't happen. And you, talked about, time it, you talked about the next day getting a notice from somebody else that it happened. What is that? So through the, the yes. So okay. if um, if for some reason there's an, a maintenance event that happens somewhere in my spaces, whether it's my crack unit or there's a, a, a drain leak or something, then the next day maintenance usually notifies me, but not always. Yeah. And I do have a, a, a drain maintenance. I do have a drain alarm downstairs for my bottom drain and it alarms off and it'll catch the next camera sound wise. So it'll, it kind of, kind of interlocks, but it's sound activated type thing or motion activated. And I know that my crack unit is hooked into the building's uh, metasis and they, that, and so if my, if I have a problem with the crack unit, it goes into alarm and notifies whoever's on call. But again, I don't usually get notified that that's happened until the next day. <laughs> but honestly, there's nothing I can do about it. And no. the, the unit is in, a, is in a separate room from the collections. So they don't actually have to go into the collection space to get to it. So I suppose it's not a big deal. I mean, I think if water or something impacted the, the collection room, then I would get more notification. With the current HVAC project, they're finally going to be installing two more crack units or whatever they're putting in, and they're upgrading my existing ones so that all of my vaults will have climate control. And I'm hoping that when they do that, they'll loop me in a little better because it'll be all new, uh, electronic controls, all new software. Uh, so, so I'm hoping that since I'm coming in on that ground level, I can get looped in a little better. Mm -hmm. How do you, I'm sure, assuming you have a, a generator system to keep that electronics going. I am hooked into the state's emergency generator for the okay. capital. So, yeah, you know, one of the yeah. advantages of being in the building with the governor battery backup here but that's 15 minutes you know oh no they got a generator that they just installed as part of this hvac thing so it's it's like a, i mean i know they've tested it and it's sweet that and i also have 
um, you know, APC backup for my computers so that if the power glitches, my computers don't go down. Yeah. How about Michael or Aaron? What's your back? What's your like backup system for? I have I have a battery that we change, <laughs> and that's it for backup. I mean, for for that's just security. I mean, that's just so <clears throat> that if it if the power goes out, that there's still you know something powering the alarm system or the yeah. the, the notification system. But in yes. terms of I think on my, we just, this isn't really security related, but my, we just upgraded our computers to a networking system. So we have more than one computer. Um, and I think that that has a backup. Um, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure because the, the gentleman who put it in kind of mentioned that we have, that it was there, but that is the extent of, of yeah. what I have. And it's, yeah. it's, it's on my laundry list of things, you know, but as everything, you know, comes up, you know, we're, we're, August, we got hit by a hailstorm, so we're replacing roofs on five of our buildings. So that, you know, yeah. is taking priority in our annual meeting. Maintenance versus security, yeah, we have some yeah. different things. Like my battery, I, I'm sitting on here. It's clear up here in this over here. Okay. It is, yeah. Um, these are like 12 foot, 15 foot ceilings back here or something. And I have to have a brave soul to go up there that far to get the little nine volt smoke detector battery up there. That is their backup, you know, the, the, ba the backup that way, but it's hooked to the power. But that little battery one is like, oh, who is going to go up there now? <laughs> so I was like, I used to do that, but not now. <laughs> so get another younger person going up that ladder. <laughs> but Michael, what do you have on a, a battery backup? Anything or? I do not believe so. If there's one in there someplace, I haven't found it yet. Very much. A generator or anything? <laughs> oh, no. So, so Michael, does, is your system just security or does it, does it have like a fire notification? You know, if there's a fire or if there's smoke or anything like that, I've or is it just straight up security? In the equipment room, whether that's tied into the system or not, I really should ask somebody, I guess. And all as far as I know, there's two motion sensors and one door sensor and that's it. But maybe there's a couple more. I hope for a fire sensor or something, but I don't know that either. Yeah, so we have, we have, smoke sensors and we have fire sensors um, on all three floors um, and our our current contract with our our fire company for lack of a better term <laughs> they come in and they check all the sensors and um, make sure that they're working and then they also we've also contracted with them to um, check our fire extinguishers so we have, you know, fire extinguishers in the main building. We have one in every one of our outside buildings. Um, but right now, what that system is tied into our current security system. Um, so if one of those goes off, our security system, it goes, gets sent to the security system, and then they call us. Um, and then they will call, notify, the if we don't cancel it somehow then they'll contact the fire or the police department <laughs> so that's what our our current fire system is right now we don't have a suppression system like a lot of museums um so we just have those those sensors and of course we have the fire poles and, and that sort of thing but that's only in our main building you know we have all these other buildings that we just have a fire extinguisher in now granted you have to have a key to get into those buildings unless somebody happens to break in but um is that is this something like this type of thing that we could um ask for at one of our conferences for funding uh information uh of updating or those things that might be something yeah. of is there a way of is peter kubit something or something else or all these who who do you get a hold of for a update like this or a it's a well, I would I would think that it would to me security kind of falls under our overarching 
mission to preserve, you know, it, it, to me, it falls under that. So I don't know why we couldn't use, couldn't find sort of funding or um, granting for helping, especially the small organizations, mm -hmm. updating their security system. Because I imagine that some of these, some of the places, you know, they just lock the door and that's it. You know, they don't have any sort of sensor or anything like that. Now, I imagine they probably have to have some sort of fire, fire at least. I would say that was about 15 years ago, a key to lock it done. Yeah. That was it. I had our mannequin still standing in here, but <laughs> <laughs> like only certain things when you tour that. If you match them up just right and you have something, it's like they'll see them in their lights and it's like, they're moving. And it's like, no, they're not, <laughs> but it's good enough. But some of that is, yeah, the over the last 15 to 20 years changing over what environment we're in i guess or what protocols of doing so but and our our night our probably our community patrol of watching what each other's doing or who's going in at different things that's a big part of our you know and we're on a well-lit square down here um and it's like who is entering at that hour and so if there's something different, it's like they'll holler and say, yeah, and you have your numbers uh, at the cop shop of who to call. So they don't have to come here to see the things. They have it on fire file. But they did collect that over this last, um, in 2020, when they went around and did a survey, they sent out surveys of how, what do you have and who do you contact? So they updated their, the fire, their, the fire and, and police department's contact list. So that's a no as different part of put the names or things at the fire department or police department. But then it's like, well, do you know this person? <laughs> so community patrol, I guess. Um, so this is a question for Karen in terms of, of it, it, I guess it falls under security. And I can't remember how much, what all you um, are in, I don't want to say control of, but what all you have in regards to items and things out within the Capitol building, within the building. I mean, do you have stuff on display or in offices and stuff like that, or are you just all self-contained and and that sort of thing? And so, and if so, how do you? What's your security for those types of things, or do you have sort of a protocol for what goes out or what can go out and that sort of thing? So, or have I opened a can of worms? <laughs> <laughs> so there's, we do draw a line between the preservation collections, which I am in charge of, and the circulating collections, which are the pieces that fall under the Office of the Capital Commission, but are actually actively in use in the building. And those are things like furnishings and light fixtures and, and, and waste baskets and, you know, um, things like that. And most of that falls under um, other people in my agency. Now, there are some pieces that are considered permanent collection pieces that are actually in use, like the tapestries in the Supreme Court. or um, and, and a lot of the stuff that is out there is large enough that I don't have to worry about somebody's going to walk off of it. But and but they're irreplaceable. Um, so we do try to make sure that 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 it, we at least you know our tour staff is tries to educate people when they go through. Our staff tries to educate office people when they are working in those preservation spaces. Um, you know, for the most part, I don't have exhibit space. I mean, I have a couple of walls in the cafeteria. Uh, that I have that in the prior to the renovations, I had some photos and a small display box up. I'm hoping that we can put those back up. I'd love to see more. Uh, I'm hoping that with some of the shuffling around, maybe eventually we can create a small exhibit space. But at this point, I don't see it happening. They're, everybody is so territorial with their space and Anytime there's a perceived open space, somebody tries to pounce on it. So does that answer the question? 
Yeah, I was just kind of curious. I mean, how how you I, I know your archives, but I know that the, the, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the in the in the um, capital and how I, I never remember how it all fits. And I imagine it's probably pretty confusing for you too. how it, it sometimes. sometimes. So so the part of the legislation that created the Office of the Capital Commission also moved all of the furnishings that were purchased as part of the capital into our purview. So the agency, it, previously agencies had their own like barcodes and they kept track of all their own inventory. We keep track of the capital original pieces. So if say the Secretary of State has an office here Anybody office in the building can have capital original furniture in their spaces if they want it. They don't have to use it. But if they leave the building, if say their office moves to a different location, they cannot take it with them. We have spent decades uh, perusing office agencies that have moved all over the state, uh, surplus sales, trying to recapture all that stuff that left the building and then people are purging because they don't want anymore and bringing it back in. I think there's only a couple of pieces we know about in some offices. I mean, we, we actively have been, it's okay, so we know you have that and we can't come in and grab it, but if you ever decide you don't want it, it comes back here. Keep it up to date knowing you know they know you want it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so we have a very active inventory that we keep track of. Everything that's in circulation is barcoded and uh, we're using Passport to keep, keep track of it. The um, so so we've barcoded like the desks and the chairs that are capital original, but the other pieces in their suites that are modern. So if they have a modern desk chair, that's not us. We don't keep track of that. Modern bookcases, we don't keep track of that. But anything that's kept originally purchased for use in this building, we keep track of. How about on the different, different you know, kind of a different same line but different? How about library archives? like your art or de things like that. Um, original versus copy, anybody else in the conversation? Um, we have, we're doing our best to scan and make a copy put out on shelf rather than the original sitting there. Um, and, but we still have many original single papers in our file cabinets that aren't quite done yet. <laughs> we got two cabinets out of the 10 done. <laughs> piece at a time, but most of the things on the shelving is done uh, of things, but the file cabinets are loose papers and random different things. So I don't know if there's, because, and we have, you have public access to all of the things we have here. So, but is there a, anybody else who has a, a library collection that they don't allow public access to? We have, so we have a research library on the seventh floor that's primarily used by in-house uh, members. And the historic publications that are up there, most of them, I would say, I've been able to acquire multiple copies. So I probably have things in triplicate. I have the worst one up on the seventh floor. The next, the middle one, kind of, available for my research so I don't have to go to the seventh floor to access it and then a preservation copy that is only accessed if somebody wants to see Bertram Goodhue's signature on it or a cleaner copy yes yes and um at this point we're starting to digitize some of those resources but um you know because I don't generally I mean nothing's really open to the public. I mean, it's, it's open by appointment only. Uh, and, and usually the people that are coming want to see the good stuff. They don't, I mean, certainly people who are just coming to do research are more than happy to access my research copies, but a lot of them, you know, they want to take a photo of the original piece, not a, 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 a duplicate. But Yeah. Anybody else in library? Well, we have a research room and a lot of our a lot of our we a lot of our books in there, with the exception of say like the family histories that have been bound, um, are do we have multiple copies. So I if there's one in the research room, but I know I have probably one or two in our actual collection. Um, 
but like I said, there's just a handful of things that I just have one copy of. Um, and that I usually keep in my office where I'm at right now. Um, and that if somebody does come in, I can pull it out for them. A lot of that stuff is not necessarily in a delicate condition. It's just, it's like, I have, for instance, somebody wrote a, a book on the town of Tui, which is in Saunders County. I just have one copy of that, but it's, was just done like five years ago. So it's a really new copy. Um, but if I got another copy, I would obviously put it in the research room. And I have a lot of, a lot of like the, the centennial books from like churches and things like that and towns like that. In some cases, I may only have one copy. Um, it's in the research room. Now, some of our stuff we have duplicated um, or scanned. Um, for instance, we have um, a um, marriage index list that we've done for our, the marriage licenses that we have. Um, and we've copied that because when it was done, it was typed, you know, so it was just the one copy. But so we've, we've since copied that. So we have a backup copy of that. Um, although now our, our marriage licenses have been digitized. We just haven't gotten a copy of that yet. Um, but for the most part, it's copies in there. Um, I have, I did, uh, our 1907 plat was actually plat book was re, reprinted, and so we use that reprint. But the 1918 one hasn't been, and I have a dozen copies of that. But so I really don't care if the one. So I did. I did accept one about 15 years ago that I actually tore apart so I could physically copy it. You know, because it's you know a big huge book and it you can't put it on a copy machine. But I accepted that one even though I had a dozen copies. So I could physically tear it apart so I could put it on the copy machine. Um, but I have a half a dozen still in my collection, so I don't need, you know, yeah, I, I one have a out of a dozen doesn't, doesn't hurt me. So Yeah, and I have a 19.4 one like that and took and strategically cut it apart so that it could go in a uh, copy size. And so it's, it's on the shelf as an original in sleeves cut into you know eight inch pieces rather than 24 inch wide things so it's like it's cut down on the lines of the things so that it could fit in there but you could see the original piece the one thing that we haven't copied and i i don't know i don't know how or if we're going to are like the family histories that get donated to us um mm -hmm. you know because they're files of things but this is something somebody else has compiled. And yeah. so, you know, we don't own any copyright on it, you know. Um, so I feel kind of leery about copying it. Um, I, I, one or two pages is fine, but copying a whole book that they put together is, is a little trickier. So and then are those out in public use that way? Or are yes. they you in your secure part? No, they're in they're in our research room because quite frankly we just don't have the physical room to yeah. put all of those in our security area. So, so. Hmm. so what about you, Michael? Do you do you guys have a research room up there or research area? I can't remember. There is a bookshelf with books on it that are so old they start to fall apart as soon as I take them off and I keep thinking that's something I should get digitized and it's all a mess trying to decide. It's just kind of a scattershot. So I hope I'm making some of the right decisions anyway. So do you, this I guess does fit into the whole security. Yet. Do you um, either loan anything out or do you accept loans into your, into your museum? We, we do have loan forms and so on. Nobody's, come in and tried to loan anything since I started there. It's all been gifts, but if they did, it wouldn't be that hard to do it. Uh, just hopefully it gets documented correctly and hopefully everything will be all right. So do you have anything on loan? You know, has somebody has somebody given you something that's, that's, um, that's because yeah, that's one thing that I think a lot of people have run into is these long-term loans and and we do have some long-term loans that I don't know if any of the family 
is still there and we care about it or not, but I, you know, stoves and kitchen dinette sets and that sort of thing that are considered alone, but I don't think anything would ever happen. To them. Originally, a... our, originally our um, archives started coming in as a loan piece and then it changed over to uh, possession rather than loan. Yeah, we have some long-term loan things and um, one, and actually just this, this, this past month, we have an exhibit on the Oxbow Trail and I don't know if any of you have heard of the Oxbow Trail, but it's one of the trails that went across Nebraska and it came through um, Saunders County. And so we have an exhibit on it and we're fortunate enough to have a journal that was written by a gentleman who went across that trail and then he ended up coming back and he settled in Iowa, but then later came to Saunders County. So we have the original, but it's on loan to us um, because the family still wants possession. But as part of our loan agreement, it's under Plexi. And so we have to get the screwdrivers out if we really want to get it out. But since it does belong to the family, they are able to come and take it. And just recently they came and took, took, um, took it to look at and then brought it back. Um, but I have a few other loans that came in well before I was here that there's no paperwork on. <laughs> and uh, I would like to get rid of them, but I'm not sure I have the time right now to even attempt to, to do all of that. But we've sort of stopped taking loans. Um, there's, um, it has to be under very, very specific circumstance to, to, take, a, to take anything. And I have, I don't loan anything out with a few exceptions. For instance, my dress forms, you know, that you put clothes and stuff on, I don't mind loaning those out because they're in really good shape and that sort of thing and they come back. But mm -hmm. I've had some odd requests for, for things to be loaned out. Um, we have these birds that we would love to get rid of. They're mounted birds and they're old, you know, they probably have arsenic and mercury and stuff in them. And if, if they accidentally got destroyed I wouldn't be <laughs> too sad but anyway I've had people a request to borrow those um, mm. which I think is the strangest thing um, or or they seem to think that we're that our our clothing is can be rented for some reason you know that they can come and borrow a, a dress for a costume or something like that but um, so I know that the the capital doesn't have obviously dresses and that sort of thing um, but do you accept loans or, or loan things to other organizations or, I mean, I know you're a very specific kind of niche, but I imagine there are probably some things that you could possibly loan or have loaned to you. We have, okay, so I know in the past there have been, people have used artwork from our collections to hang in their offices. And over the last probably 20 to 30 years, uh, there's been a, real push within the agency to pull all that back in. We are not your art library. This is for research. Uh, if you want to purchase a replica and hang up your own, that's great. Um, you know, obviously we have some things that we just don't let out for security purposes, not, not like for like building security. Like I'm not gonna release the, the detailed floor plans or the steel drawings. Um, but there are people who would like to hang blueprints in their offices. And if you, you know, now that the technology is there for us to make a digital copy, you can create your own print. Uh, we've, so we've gotten away from that. Thank goodness. Uh, there are, have been a few pieces that have been, we've loaned out to museums when they're doing an exhibit. So, you know, we had a few pieces at the Sheldon a couple of years ago. We have been in talks with the Historic Society or the History of Nebraska about possibly creating an exhibit about the Capitol and all of the centenary things that are gonna be happening now uh, because you know groundbreaking was 100 years ago next year. Uh, that's kind of fallen off because of the pandemic, so I'm not sure it's gonna happen. Uh, we have, um, and we loaned some stuff to an exhibit in New York for a Hildreth Mier exhibit. But for the most part, we don't, you know, we don't loan things out unless it's for a very specific, reputable museum. They, they you know, it has a very clear end date. Uh, we, I think, 
I have cleared up our last loaned collections item, I think. I mean, we've been great. I mean, if, if there's other stuff in here that's on loan, I don't know about it. Um, well, no, I'm going to take that back. We have a, a collection of photos from the Journal Star that we borrowed for scanning, and then the pandemic hit. I believe that that collection is eventually going back, instead of going back to the Journal Star, I think it's actually going to the university, to their special collections. So when they're ready to take it, it's ready to go. But again, we've just kind of been sitting on it with the pandemic, and it's, you know, they're safe here. And we know exactly who's responsible, so it's not long term. Um, we do borrow some stuff periodically for scanning because, you know, with us, it's far more about the information, less about the object. So I'd rather have a digital surrogate than not have it at all. Uh, because really what I need is that information, you know, the, the, so, so we, we have a lot of collections of stuff that actually belong to other institutions. And it's very clearly marked that these actually belong to somebody else. These are just digital surrogates for, or, or physical surrogates for research purposes. And if anybody wants to publish any of this, you got to go to them. So if, if say somebody wanted, a, uh, say you have a photograph and I'm sure you do of like say the Capitol in like the 1950s and somebody is doing an exhibit based on the 1950s, um, would you give them a copy? I mean, could you give them a copy rather than the original? I mean, let's say, and then obviously give you credit, or would you actually loan them uh, the original? I mean, would it be the copy or the original? I would say 99% of the time, it'll be a copy. It'll be, you know, in the past, I used to actually make copies for people. Uh, now, at this point, we're just scanning and sending digital copies and they can print their own. I, yeah, it came at one. Like on our, we have a quilt show and we have loan, we bring things in and we have paperwork for that as they come in and go out. Do you have that at your art gallery? Do you have an art gallery down there at Henry? Henry down there. And do you have that type of thing as you have, do you have, Art that you bring in? I don't do a whole lot at the Henry, but as far as I know, I don't even know if they could get digital copies of some of the stuff there, okay. being as rare as they are, but I'm not sure. Okay. Because like on ours, we have a little possession thing of they're signing in saying they're dropping that quilt off, and who is to pick that up and who dropped it off on that piece and it's like yeah those are the yep you sign saying you dropped it off and you sign saying you picked it up that's our our loan in and out things so but, yeah so i have a question for everybody what do you do, you, do when i think about security i don't necessarily always think about physical security but also digital security and which i realize is all huge, huge topic. But I'm curious as to what other institutions are doing. I mean, I certainly I have, my stuff is all backed up through the office, you know, the, the OCIO, but quite frankly, I have no idea what they're doing. I, uh, I do know that their backup tapes, I think, are recycled more frequently than I would like. Um, I've been trying to back stuff up onto a flash drive or some kind of solid state something just so that I know that even if it's just sitting on my desk next to my computer, at least I have a backup. Uh, I haven't gone to the point of taking stuff home with me, but, um, but I have workplaces where I have. Uh, what is everybody else doing? Um, well, we... I don't have a lot of a backup. I do have an external hard drive that things will be put on the computer. Um, I'm not tech savvy whatsoever. Um, I will say we we just recently got a, and I said recently, it's been two years now, um, a huge negative collection. We're talking 30 to 40,000 glass plate, polyester, safety film negatives. 
So we're in the process of digitizing all of that. And that has its separate backup um, hard drive because we're scanning all that stuff. Um, and we used to have a um, safety deposit box. So I had, and I don't even know if we can read the, the stuff anymore, had stuff on a CD, you know, I backed up, I had all my stuff, all my collections scanned, I had my, at least the, the paperwork anyway, and all the, the cards that we had done, you know, uh, I still have all the, you know, cards. And um, that was all scanned and it was kept in the safety deposit box. But I had board members who thought that was not a necessary expense. And so I can't, I live on the grounds. I live literally live right next door to the museum. So honestly, anything that would happen to the museum would probably happen to me as well. So it doesn't make any sense for me to take it home. <laughs> You know, so I would have to have somebody else take something home and nobody right now is willing to do that. So um, that's the extent of of my backup. So uh, I know we need to be a little bit more proactive on that, but that's the extent of what I've I've got. So Yeah. And at one of the one of the conferences quite a while ago, it talked about interchanging that type of backup system with somebody in a different part of the state. Like having like a sister sister organization, yeah. Yep. You send mine, I send yours, so you're in a different area zone mm -hmm. for that protection wise. It's like that. It's like what's going to happen in the Panhandle versus the Central versus the East. Same with North and South. So just have a sister one, and you meet and ex exchange your things. You know, maybe at conference to say, here's our exchange things, and go back and you know that way. That might be something of a dead data exchange storage. Offsite, <laughs> it would definitely be offsite. Yeah, this is like yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. What kind of you know what? What's the pieces of that? But it's like they're going to be in that sister one where you're going to have connections between each other somehow and, and go that way. I think Shadron and Wayne State um, uh, interchange things. So and some of that. That's way. fantastic, and that's really easy to do as long as you can meet you know somewhere once a year, once every six months. You know you do. You you muted, Karen. Sorry, sorry. You duplicate your drives and then swap them out. Um, yeah, and that's that's a great way to do it. Um, I I think at this point because the OCIO is backing up in Omaha, um, I feel like I'm at least separated enough that I can not worry about it too much. But yeah. So um, and, and our digital is um, external hard drive. And in our fireproof safe here, or cabinet here, um, and we do have some things over in the safety deposit box. Um, but again, the access to that is how long does that get updated in that piece versus what you have on, you know? But that might be a a yearly mission to make that happen in exchange at that time. So. So, when Aaron, did you say that you now have a network? Uh, our computer network, our computer right, network. Right. So the other thing that you have to be aware of that wasn't something that was on my radar until maybe five years ago or so is that is the network security and making sure that you are the only one that has, or you and a select few are the only ones that have access to those master files because I've had stuff accidentally deleted. Now I, I keep most of my stuff on my own in our network on my personal hard drive, you know, on my personal file, but there's materials that we've scanned to share on a on an agency drive that, you know, somebody will go in and just snoop around, which I'm fine with, you know, learn about the agency, learn about my stuff, but an accidental drag and drop can happen. And it happens in a heartbeat. And if you don't, if you don't notice it, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't gotten to the, we're still we're still at the beginning part of our networking. We now have two computers instead of one, um, and that was the big that was part of the big thing. And part of it was so we could um, have we we're upgrading our past perfect to the web base, so we have so we have multiple access points for that. Um, we don't I don't have anything on my computer in terms of 
like our financials or anything like that, none of that is on my computer. Um, in fact, I don't even have access to that. My treasurer and that sort of thing has it. So really the only thing that if somebody wants to start digging in here, they might look at our past perfect files and what I wrote in a report, you know, five years ago, and that's probably the extent of. But yeah, once we get a little bit more working on our network, um, right now I have a, I have a um, password to get in. My assistant has a password, and there's one other one. But so far, that's it. We don't have any other any other um, access. So, and like I said, we're still getting used to <laughs> working with this computer and the networking and all of that sort of fun stuff. Right, but that's exactly what I'm talking about. This, that, you know, accidental deletions happen, and um, you know, obviously, since you all are working with the stuff, you're going to be a little more aware than, you know, like I've the, like, so at this point, I'm duplicating everything that I have on the, the agency drive. I also have in my personal, but not everybody does that. You know, somebody will find something cool, a photo of um, that they found yeah. on the internet and yeah. then they'll um, and they'll copy it and put it in the in the in the agency drive so that we can see it because it's again it's a resource for us for information and somebody will accidentally delete it or they'll drag and copy thinking they're copying it to their own personal stuff and then they instead move it yeah so when you're setting up that network you should probably do a little research on security and kind of build it together because i'm finding that it's hard to do it retroactively. Sure. Okay. Now, of course, I'm working with a much larger group yes. of people yeah. and change is hard, but but yeah, no, I, I, I wish that I had kind of been in on some of that at the ground level. Well, unfortunately, the person who set up our, our, our system is I, just a call away. You know, he's not, he has a small, he's a small company and he's, you know, he's a local company. And so I can, and he says, just give me a call. So fortunately I have that. I don't have to deal with a big, you know, oh, we'll get back to you when we can. He's, he's, uh, he's fortunately, you know, very knowledgeable and he's, he's come when I've called the first couple of times. So, so, well, it looks like we're about at our hour. Is there anything else anybody wants to bring up and chat about? And again, I'm sorry about the technical difficulties earlier, but so if not, thank you guys for coming. So yes. Thank you. So yeah, so next next month is gonna be on museum stores. I don't I don't think I don't think Karen has the store. So you know, we keep trying to get the historic society back in here and they have I just don't think they have the staffing right now. Could be, yeah. So so, okay, well, we'll see you guys later. Thanks again. And it's the third Friday instead of the it's fourth. It's the third Friday because the fourth Friday is right after Thanksgiving and we didn't think anybody would show up for that. Yep. <laughs> Football game at that time. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. Right. Have a good weekend. Take care. You too, bye.